Hello, and in today's video we'll be answering the question Why was Pluto demoted from being a planet to being a dwarf planet? And why did its 75 year membership of the Planet Club come to an end in 2005? We'll also take a closer look at this cold, mysterious world. But before we start, if you want to keep up to date on when we'll be riding the learning curve again, click subscribe and hit the bell notification. So let's hop on that learning curve and take a look. Pluto was discovered on the 18th of February 1930 by Clyde Tombow. Even though Tombow gets the credit for its discovery, the search for the planet was actually started by Percival Lowell. In the 1890s, Lowell had set up an observatory that still bears his name in Flagstaff, Arizona, in order to study the planets. In 1906, he started his search for what was then termed Planet X. He'd recently had a bit of a hoo-ha about his whole canals on Mars thing, and he wanted to get back into the astronomical community's good books. He calculated that wobbles in the orbits of Neptune and Uranus suggested that a body outside of their orbits was exerting a gravitational effect on these planets. However, Lowell searched for the elusive ninth planet for more than a decade without success, and when Lowell died in 1916, the planet was still stubbornly resisting attempts to find it. In 1929, the search was resumed at the Lowell Observatory, and the task was given to Clyde Tombow, a self-taught amateur astronomer from Kansas. He used the calculations of Lowell, and another astronomer called Pickering, to continue looking for the planet. In order to find the planet, he used a blink comparator. This involves taking two photographs of the same part of the sky a few days apart, and then comparing them. During those few days, between the photographs, the stars, because they're so far away, won't have moved. However, closer objects will have moved and so will appear in different places on the second photograph. After about a year of searching, Tombo finally found the planet. Originally, it had been called Planet X, but a better name was needed. The name Pluto was actually suggested by an 11-year-old girl called Venetia Burney, who lived in Oxford in the UK. She told her grandfather of the name, and he then passed that on to the Lowell Observatory, where the discovery had been made. There was, however, a problem. Pluto was much smaller than had been predicted. Lowell's calculations had suggested that Pluto should have a mass of 10 Earths, but this was clearly not the case. It was later discovered that the mass of Neptune that Lowell was using in his calculations was incorrect, and that Neptune was exactly where it was supposed to be. This means that the discovery of Pluto was actually a bit of a happy accident. Pluto is small. Very small, in fact. It has a diameter of only 2,376 kilometres. That's much smaller than the Earth, and in fact it's smaller than our Moon. It also has a very strange elliptical orbit that brings it inside of the orbit of Neptune for 20 years in every cycle. And its orbit is inclined by 17 degrees, more than that of any of the main planets. Pluto's also a long way away. It orbits the Sun between 4.4 and 7.38 billion kilometres. Let's put this into a bit of context, shall we? Imagine I have a football field, and let's assume for the sake of argument that from goal line to goal line is 100 metres. If I put the Sun on the centre spot here, and I put Pluto at its furthest point from the Sun on one of the goal lines, that's 50 metres away, the orbit of the Earth would be just one metre away from the Sun. That's well within the centre circle. And here I've also put on the orbits of some of the other planets, just to give you an idea of how far Pluto is away from the Sun. This has meant that finding pretty much anything out about Pluto has been incredibly difficult. When it was discovered, it was believed to be roughly Earth's size. The initial calculations of its mass were based on how bright it appeared from Earth. The reasoning there is that larger bodies will appear brighter in the night sky because they reflect more of the sun's rays. In 1948, further calculations estimated the mass of Pluto to be about 10% of that of the Earth. In 1976, however, Dale Cruikshank, Carl Pilcher and David Morrison 
discovered that there was methane ice on Pluto, meaning that it was much brighter than it would have been if it had been just composed of rock. This meant that Pluto was in fact much smaller than we'd thought, and its mass was revised to just 1% of that of the Earth. And then in 1978, Pluto's largest moon, Charon, was discovered. When we have two bodies orbiting around each other, we can do some clever math to work out their mass quite accurately. Since the New Horizons probe that visited Pluto in 2015, we now know that Pluto has a mass of about 0.2% of that of the Earth. We also have a much more detailed view of Pluto. And here it is. Since Pluto is named after the god of the underworld in classical mythology, the names for the different geographical regions of Pluto have names coming from dark deities and demons, also from notable space missions and people involved in the history of Pluto. The bright white heart of Pluto is named Tombo Regio, after its discoverer. And then the dark area next to it is named Cthulhu Macula, after the deity created by H.P. Lovecraft. The word macula coming from the Latin for spot or stain. There's also a Balrog Macula, named after the demonic creatures from the Lord of the Rings, and a Meng Po Macula, named after a deity in Chinese Buddhism that makes the dead forget their past lives. So, now we know a little bit about Pluto, back to the question at hand. Why was it demoted as a planet? What have scientists got against Pluto? Well, as it turns out, nothing really. It's all to do with how we define what a planet is. Throughout history, we decided what a planet was on a pretty arbitrary basis, with a planet being essentially anything we wanted it to be. This definition of a planet was, however, a bit rubbish. And so in 2005, the International Astronomical Union met to redefine the criteria for planetary status. Initially, they proposed that a planet had to fulfil two criteria. Firstly, it has to have sufficient mass for itself gravity to overcome rigid body forces, so that it assumes a hydrostatic equilibrium, or in other words, a nearly round shape. And secondly, that it be in orbit round a star and not be either a star itself or a satellite of a planet. This decision, if it had been adopted, would have reclassified three additional bodies in the solar system as planets. Charon, the largest moon of Pluto, would also have been reclassified as a planet. Charon has a diameter of 1,212 kilometres. The common centre of gravity between Pluto and Charon lies outside the circumference of Pluto, and they rotate around this point. This means that Pluto wobbles as it and Charon rotate around it. And this also would have meant that Pluto and Charon would have been classed as a double planetary system, which sounds really cool. This decision would also have classified Ceres, found in the asteroid belt, and Eris, found in the Kuiper belt, as planets, bringing the total up to 12. This proposal was ultimately rejected, and finally they decided that in order to be considered a full planet, a body must fulfil three criteria, and these are Firstly, it is in orbit around the Sun. Secondly, it has achieved sufficient mass to have achieved hydrostatic equi equilibrium. Again, this means that it's pretty much round. And also, that it has cleared the neighbourhood around its orbit. Now, Pluto succeeds in the first two criteria, but critically it fails on the final one. So let's take a look at what this means. In order for a planet to clear the neighbourhood around its orbit, it means that it must be gravitationally dominant along the path of its orbit. The solar system contains lots of debris, rocks and ice and the like, and these also, like the planets, orbit the Sun. During the latter stages of the formation of a planet, it will sweep its orbit clear of all other pieces of debris, either by pulling them into itself and absorbing them, capturing them into orbit around themselves so that they become a satellite, or by pushing them out of the way, and out of the planet's orbit. They will therefore be removed from the same orbit as the planet. For instance, there are other objects in the same orbit as the Earth, but the mass of the Earth is 1.7 million times the mass of all those other objects put together. The Earth then is gravitationally dominant in its orbit. It has cleared its orbit of the other debris. Pluto lies in the Kuiper Belt, this is a donut-shaped region of the solar system 
beyond the orbit of Neptune and contains remnants from the formation of the solar system, which, due to the presence of Neptune, were not able to clump together to form a planet. The Kuiper Belt contains lots of icy bodies orbiting the Sun. This means that there are lots of bodies in the same orbit as Pluto, but by comparison Pluto only makes up 0.7% of the total mass of all the material in the same orbit. Pluto then is not gravitationally dominant in its orbit, as it's not been able to clear away the other material that it shares the same orbit with. This means that Pluto fails the final test for being a planet. It does however pass on the first two criteria, so it does pass the test for being a dwarf planet. Since the reclassification, five objects in the solar system are now classified as dwarf planets. These are Pluto itself, Ceres, which is found in the asteroid belt, Eris, egg-shaped Haumea, and Makemake, all of these others being found beyond the orbit of Pluto. So that's that for Pluto. The debate still rages over whether Pluto should be a planet or not. Some people have actually stated that if the Earth had the same orbit as Pluto, it wouldn't be considered a planet, as there's just too much stuff out there for it to be gravitationally dominant. Pluto now, though, does belong to a more exclusive club, as there are only five dwarf planets, though that number is expected to rise considerably as we map more of the Kuiper Belt. But regardless of whether you think Pluto is a planet or not, it's still a bit special, and I for one am a fan. Well, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. And as a little bonus fact, the Disney dog Pluto was created in the 1930s and was named after the recently discovered planet. So, again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you hopefully again when we hop on that learning curve.